good morning creator <clears throat> today we're going to work on a canvas with go jump in the lake transfer um kind of had this in my head this morning well i've had it in my mind of quite a while but i was trying to really focus in on what i wanted to do with it when i was lying in bed this morning and so i said i just jump up and do it right just gotta do it before i forget my whole idea um, so let's just check on Facebook and make sure you can see me. I had to readjust my camera because I had it for over shooting um, the last few days this past week. So I had to reset it up. So I want to make sure you can see me okay. I tested it and I think you can see it all. All right. So, so say hello when you jump on so I know you're watching. And tell me where you're watching from and how's it going for you these past how many days 10 12 days that we've kind of well more than that well, maybe that many it's going to be close to two weeks here soon so let me know how you're doing I'm gonna set this up over here so we can see the comments and oh my gosh so I had a bowl of cereal all kind of waiting for people to get on I fixed myself a bowl of cereal and I just basically poured in the milk then I went to taste them went to eat it and I thought is this milk old <laughs> I looked and it said the 22nd which usually it's still okay right a few days afterwards so I just kind of ate the cereal out of it and didn't really um try not to drink the milk or anything but in the back of my mind I'm thinking I have a sour stomach but I don't think I do it's just all in my mind right <laughs> oh my gosh so I keep like drinking water because I thought oh and then it, so we just buy like the half gallon the smaller one and um I already have another one that's dated the fourth and I thought oh I should probably make some soup like a cheeseburger chowder or something with this milk that was before I tasted it because it's not even half gone yet so now I gotta decide whether to use that in the soup or not crazy hi Joanne how's it going let me set this uh, keyboard over so yeah jump in the lake I have an idea I'm going to use one of my uh, canvases that I bought on clearance last, probably last summer, last fall. This one's a 16 by 20. It's a linen canvas and they were on like super duper reduction. I can't remember how much, but um, they're kind of fun to work with. I'm going to put some paint on it and we're going to do, um, what is this called? The woven plaid yeah I'm gonna do it in two directions but I'm gonna do it coming down like a blanket draping over and then uh, when I get done all painting this and getting this on then we'll put on go jump in the lake it's going good I'm going up and down worrying about I know I'm the same way it's like I don't know it's weird it's just weird we all know it's weird we all know it and we're just trying to not ignore it but trying to pretend like it's everything's gonna be okay right hi Linda hi Vicki so I'm gonna I'm gonna entertain you so you don't have to think about it for a while right and if you are a designer I'll be on Chalk Couture Designer Studio tomorrow afternoon. Um, it's four o'clock central, three o'clock mountain, two o'clock Pacific, five o'clock Eastern, right? So yeah, I know, right, Joanne? So, um, so I'm gonna be entertaining a little bit today and then tomorrow. And then if you're on Team B, that got moved to April 7th on a Tuesday. Uh, I think it's 11 o'clock mountain, so that'll be noon central. 
Um, and I already got my projects figured out. I've tested them. <laughs> I'm kind of doing them in stages so you don't have to watch the full process, especially tomorrow because I have two projects in there. You know, they're not just chalk and go. They have a lot of uh, layers to them, so I've kind of done them in stages, so you can see me do it as we go. So after we're done painting this, we're gonna put on Go Jump the Lake. So I'm gonna set this aside. And I got tape brushes. Like I said, I kind of have an idea, but sometimes I go, I go ahead and have this done before I come on, but I didn't this time, I thought, this may take a while, but maybe some of you have really nothing else to do but to watch me blabber on here. <laughs> talk, 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 and chalk, chalk, chalk. So, here we go. Like the beautiful world. Oh, thank you, Joanne. I was just opening my uh, Fusion Mineral Paint, but I think I'm going to kind of give it a little stir in the jar. Fusion Mineral Paint, you have to buy it from a supplier, Not even, you can't even order it from their website, you have to go to a dealer, and usually they're little uh, boutique shops that are doing um, repurposing furniture and stuff, that's how I found it. Uh, we sell it at the Attic out in Valley, Nebraska, which is a kind of a co-op shop, um, and that's where I sell my um, Odessa Rose designs. And I do some retail out there also. I sell like the Myra bags, and um, then I do I do a little bit of home decor, wholesale, and um, and holiday. But of course, my signs and stuff that I've done with Chaka Tour is out there too. So that's where I found or discovered Fusion Mineral Paint. I first used it on painting my son's kitchen cabinets in his house that he bought. And that's when I fell in love with it. The first stroke I put on, I was like, oh my gosh, this paint is amazing. And then my daughter used it in her kitchen also, my daughter Avery. And so then I started putting it on my um, specially repurposed signs that I buy, like I'll buy, um, you know, clearanced out signs, uh, either Hobby Lobby or anywhere, anywhere I see them, if they're a really good deal, then I'll paint sand or paint over them, a combination of, and I like to use a fusion mineral paint. Sometimes I'll use just a latex indoor house paint, especially if it's a really a surface that has a very bold contrasting print, I might, um, I really don't want to, although a couple coats of this usually gets rid of it, but sometimes I'll put a coat of just regular paint over it and then um, then put my Fusion Mineral paint, just so I'm not, I don't want to say wasting my paint, but a kind of, a regular paint will kind of just block it out, kind of like a, um, <laughs> the word when you, uh, the type of paint that you put on to neutralize everything, neutralize your colors. So... Anyway, I kind of just brought it down here. I have my black and my white. I also have red because I used it like at Christmas time. And yeah. So, um, but I like to kind of work with wet paint. So kind of like watery. So I will wet my brush first. And I just have a glass of water here. I guess you can see that. And um, just dip a little paint in it. And at this point, I would double sure, make sure that I have the top at the top, but there's no hangers on this. This is just a canvas, okay? But I'm gonna use this one at the top. This one has kind of an overlay, so that might always get in the way when you're trying to hang it up. I'll probably end up putting a hanger on it, but okay. So I got my brush and, oh, I forgot. One of my important steps I was going to do. Hold on. I got to get some painter's tape. I'm going to block off the area for my blanket. I don't want that to get painted the same way I'm painting the background for the rest of the artwork. So I need to block this off. And let me see what I can do. 
I'm going to take one of these and kind of use it as a pattern. Good morning, Vicki. Oh my gosh. We're going to paint on a canvas and then um, use, we're going to end up using Go Jump in a Lake. Go Jump in the Lake transfer, which is brand new. But I'm going to make a blanket to drape over the top first. Um, but I wanted to mask this off because I don't want this to, this paint to get in this area. So I may end up painting that differently. I haven't I haven't decided because I'm not 100% sure on how I'm working this yet. So you are totally seeing me think in think off the top of my head. So I'm trying Oh my gosh. I'm trying to maneuver this so I can get this how I want it. So probably need to find the center. And I'm guessing my big ruler is in the other room. So hold on, I gotta go get it. size project and we're going to do in team B um, live that I'm doing on April 7th and so I have to work that out on my larger counter out there because I have more space so that's why I had this out there okay so this is it's supposed to be 16 but really So somewhere in here is eight. So how far down do I want my blanket to come? So at least a third of the way down, probably right in here somewhere. So I'm just gonna pencil mark where my eight inches, which is the halfway. And then I assume goes like that. I really want it to go like all the way to this corner here. So I'm gonna have to go down further. I want that corner and I want that corner down. Okay. Maybe even <laughs> I need to be like standing right here. Somewhere in here. Okay, let's try in that middle again. In that area. Not that it really has to be exactly in the point, it has to be exactly in the middle. I kind of want to just look like the blanket is draped over the canvas. So, alright. I'm going to put some tape and mark it off. Because I don't want um, this paint to get in this area. Hi, Mary Allen. Viewer from North Carolina, great. Thanks for sprinkling. I've never really like asked people to do that, but I'm glad you did. So it doesn't matter to me. I'm just here to entertain you. <laughs> So I'm masking this off because I'm going to do a woven plaid up here in both directions. So it looks like kind of like a blanket hanging over the canvas when we're all done. 
that's my idea. Like I said, this was all in my head. I have done this before on the, it was before the woven plaid came out. I kind of had to make my own blanket out of different transfers, but um, I can't remember what I did, how I did it. But I used the, uh, that canoe that had the cross direction thing on it. Um, that's what I used on this part. But I didn't paint the canvas. I just did it on a white canvas. And it turned out pretty cute. It sold right away, so I haven't done it since. But this time we're going to do uh, this plaid. When we get done painting this, and we'll do it this direction, and then we'll do it the opposite direction. And we'll make kind of a blanket. And then when we get... So all this will be painted, that will be done, and then over top of all that, we'll put Go Jump in the Lake, okay? And then I still might put um, a border, a transfer border, to frame it out. We'll see, unless this looks busy enough. Okay, so I don't want any paint in this area. Okay, so back to my Fusion Mineral paint. I'm glad I remembered that. Now I wet my brush. Yeah, you can see that. The paint always kind of wants to like separate on here at first. Like it just sits on it. And bubbles up probably because it's too wet but I just keep brushing it basically I'm just kind of lightening lightened the linen a little bit but I'm gonna be blending in some probably greens towards the bottom and blues towards the top so it looks kind of like you're looking over a lake If you've watched me before, I kind of like leaving my some brush stroke area looks around the tops and bottoms. So um, that's what I'm trying to achieve here. I feel like I'm really short of breath today. The trauma of eating that nearly soured milk is probably what did it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't get sick. Don't you hate it when you buy food and you don't get it used up and you have to throw it away? It seems like John and I are really bad about that. put a piece of cardboard underneath here so I'm not getting paint on my table. In case it comes off the edge like it just did. bottom this I like I buy seems like I buy a lot of folk art but I buy other brands too they're just those acrylic craft paints and I just pick up different colors this one's kind of more of a mossy green 
Um, a lot of people ask what colors I use. I don't think that's really important. Just get some green, because you know, I blend colors so much that until I get to the shade I like, that I don't think it, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have the exact same color. If that makes sense. Because I never really use just one color. I, I'm blending either brown, black, whites, other shades of, like say the green. I like to do that because you want to have a little bit of depth in your coloring. So don't stress about the colors. Just go buy different shades of green, different shades of blue, different shades of all the colors. Okay. It's a little darker on this end, I think, than that end. And when I was doing my videos of my eggs, I had time lapsed them, and people thought I was using a metallic paint because it was just wet. It was shiny from being wet. So I was not using metallic paints. I was just um, using these acrylics. So it's kind of neat. When they're really wet like this, uh, if you let set just a little bit, the brush strokes kind of go away. They just dissolve into the paint, so you're not really having that. Okay, so now I'm gonna start doing blues and I'm working my way, maybe a dark, darker blue up to a lighter blue. I don't know. I'm gonna wet the, uh, kinda rinse the green out of this brush. My creativity intrigues you. Oh, thanks Vicki. You know, I've never, I never did this. I mean, I just started messing around with chocotour and then um, paint. And so I have really no idea what I'm doing. I'm just doing it and I just experiment. So just trying to have a little fun, which is nice when you get, um, you know, a surface that's not expensive and you can just mess around with it. And I always figure it's just paint if I don't like it, I can paint all this black and just use a black background and do something else. So don't stress about it. I'm gonna find a little bit darker blue. Um, maybe even, I have like a navy. I also have this beautiful, it's called black green, but it's kind of that deep uh, jade that might be pretty up against this and then Kind of go into the navy and then go into light. Uh, I was a I was a 4-H leader for 16 years when my kids were growing up, and um, we had to teach uh, the principles of arts and elements of design. And so I learned a lot about. Um, and of course, I think it's just kind of my thing is uh, working with with those because um like i said i like to decorate rooms and um you know pick out your different surfaces your different textures your different colors and patterns and make them all work so i learned a lot from either watching learned a lot through 4-h because um i actually do have and i looked them up the other day the worksheet that kind of tells you about principles of arts and elements of design and i know Mr. Eric from Chaka Tour was on Designer Studio, what was that, last week or so, and started talking about those too. And I said, oh, that's that's funny because um, I was gonna, gonna kind of start mentioning that on my lives about working with color. Like, it's like, like we're gonna be creating rhythm by working with rhythm, which is a, an uh, element, principle of design. And so we're working with the elements of color and we're going to create rhythm by going from one hue to the other. 
So we're working with our greens going into the blues. So that is a element of design. So we're kind of doing that and you may be doing that and you don't even realize that's what you're doing. That's what I always told my 4-H'ers that you, you're doing it, but you don't know what it is. You don't know what it's called. It's just something you gotta learn, I guess. Because in, in 4-H, you had to talk about that in your write-up when you, you had to do a write-up on your artwork or your whatever you were creating. So they had to learn about, um, learn about those things. And they were ma always made it harder than what it really was. You just gotta analyze your your uh, project and figure it out. So I'm just gonna put a dab of this on my wet brush, okay? And I'm just gonna blot it. And then I'm just gonna kinda start blending them. again I'm actually gonna kind of pick up some of this color. I feel like it's a little bit intense. So I'm gonna brush it and then blot it on my towel here, paper towel. Just to kind of pick it up a little bit. Okay, wash it out again. I'm gonna get a fresh paper towel because I think I'm gonna need it. I want you to be your I want to be your neighbor. That's funny. Where do you live, Vicky? I wish I had neighbors to come and create with me. They're all busy, you know. Of course they may be home now, I don't know. I can't see my neighbors very well at my house because I don't have very many front windows. The biggest window that's in the front is our guest bedroom. And of course I'm not in there. Okay, so we're getting that blended into the green. I want these brush strokes to blend in down here. You probably can't see them, but. Ah. Too much of my blue went down there. Let's go into blues. I think just go right into, um, what do I want to do? I eventually want to end up in this kind of a gray blue. It's called uh, Cloudy Day, which would be good. Because I think this coloring I'm going to do in the uh, corals, maybe. So I want a nice contrasting color against the coral. And so I think this Cloudy Day it's kind of a gray blue color up here. I think is the color I want to end up with. So I may just go ahead and start just blending that color in and see how it blends in with this. And like I said, I'll just see how it goes. I'm liking it so far. It's looking pretty. So, you know, my water's kind of a a sagey green color right now which is okay because I want that color I'm just gonna blend it right into this blue so that will change the color a little bit
Our log house is at the very end of the Lewis and Clark Trail. And I have to ask, where's the end of the Lewis and Clark Trail? I don't remember those things. But it sounds interesting. must be like heaven there that's why they ended there it's kind of turning grayish so I might have to bring in some brighter blue just to perk it up a little bit but right here it's very gray so maybe this is a Dutch aqua We love it. It looks pretty good on camera. But I think I need a little bit more blending. I don't want too wet of a brush. It's pretty wet on there already. So we have this Dutch Aqua. So we need to kind of get this to blend a little bit better. So I might take a more of a drier brush and just try to brush up. The trick is, see, it come, picks it up down here and it's like, oh. Oregon City. Well, that makes sense. Out west. I've asked you that, haven't I? Because I remember reading that Oregon City. I just can't remember everybody. Ugh, I don't like these little I don't like brush strokes or the end of a brush stroke. I want it to blend. So you about have to brush all the way up or all the way down and then wipe your brush. Okay, so, all right. I'm gonna take um, another paintbrush, a dry one, and just come up and then wipe it off. So I just took a dry brush and then stroked up and then wiped it off so I don't get this color down here when I do the next one. I think that's blending it pretty good. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. And I don't have it like completely on the edge, like over, I can still see some of my canvas on here on the edge pretty covered on this side but I don't mind that that some of that linen canvas is shining through so now same here I have a little bit of it here and there which is fine so now I'm going to do dry it with my heat gun get some of this out of the way um, I still try to decide whether to paint the inside of this so, or let this just let the linen be the undertone of the blanket that we're gonna make. Hi, Julian. 
we got this canvas painted. This might take a little while. I love to work with blues and greens. My favorite. Good morning, Tonda. How are you? We're going to do um, a woven blanket plaid up here to make it look like a blanket hanging over. And then we painted this. And this is dry. We'll do the blanket. And then over all of it, we'll be putting Go Jump in the Lake transfer. I also have some of these little ta decorative tacks that I might tack spaced out here. Um, I have, these are kind of a blackish grassy ones, antique brass, but I have some ones that are more goldish color, antique, a lighter antique brass, more gold than black. And for the life of me, I couldn't find them. That's what I was running around at 10, 10, trying to find. And I don't know what I did with them, so I'm going to decide which, I think I want more of the gold ones on, but we'll see. I'm going to have to add them after we get off, after I find them. We still have some wet spots, we're just drying them out. Good, the sun is shining. We're supposed to have sunshine sometime today, but right now it's cloudy. I was hoping to wake up the sunshine, but no such luck. See, I can see where it's wet because it's shiny. It's like watching paint dry. It's starting to feel dry. Alright. Whew. That was a little noisy. Alright. And like I said, I really want to do this blanket in I'm thinking coral. There's guava. Guava would be good. Um or peach and peachy. Uh, let me see. This is coral. That might be um, a little too bright for my subtle shades. Grapefruit pink. Um, but I do want them to, to kind of contrast, but not overly contrast. The two directions. Let me see. I mean, I want them to be... It's kind of cool. I also, I've done this kind of accidentally. Um, I, I did it when I was doing my Christmas tree cutouts. I painted and then I chalked over. Um, 
like a sweater pattern like and then I took a wet brush after it dried and just kind of brushed over it and it kind of I called it fuzzed kind of blurred the chalk a little bit so it made it look fuzzy to me so I thought that might be kind of fun to chalk this pattern on but then kind of brush it with a wet a slightly wet brush just to kind of blend it in a little bit and kind of fuzz it out I, I'm calling it fuzz so it looks more like the texture of a blanket so I might try that on this hopefully it won't be a failure we'll find out okay so I'm gonna grab my woven plaid I'm going to do it both directions. I don't think I have to tape it off. I do want the pattern right up against that line. The good thing about if I did put tape on there, I could definitely see better, but I think I could see it. Thank goodness this is not overly sticky and um, driving me nuts. Otherwise, it'd be sticking to everything. I just want to see if that's right there. Great. It's not really the same. I have to use this one, I think. Still going a little bit into the <sighs> Don't drive me nuts. It's gonna work better if I tape it. Then I can see. I don't have to wrestle it so much. hard to see the difference between these two when you're looking through little lines or dots. So this will give me more of a clear place to position. And go over the blue tape if I need to. It won't drive me crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna line that and that. And this one is lining that. As long as this line is correct. So since it's not very sticky, that's when it, I'm gonna start here if I chalk and come, like start in the middle and go out is the best way to do it when it's not sticky. So we're gonna do guava and um, pink grapefruit. Let's see what it looks like. I'm so thirsty, so thirsty. It kind of reminds me of the colors in here. So, I mean, you could go back and add some, like, red line or something bright. I don't know. We'll see. Oh, 
probably the overall color of um, Go Jump in the Lake. I'm leaning towards my dark navy that I make with um, the blue and black or uh, a brown. So I'm thinking about that. I could do it all in blue, but put leave the or in brown. When I say blue, I mean navy. So we'll see about that. So all these things are racing in my mind as I'm trying to get this color ready. Actually, they've been racing in my mind since I've been trying to design this in my head, but now it's getting to be time when I gotta make my decision. So I wanna make sure this wasn't too thick so I can spread it over this um, transfer lightly because it's not sticky. So you want to not have to press very hard. So that's why you wanna make sure you're, but then again, you don't want your chalk too runny either because you don't want it to run underneath the transfer and not make a nice print. So it gets kind of tricky when they're not very sticky. So hopefully, um, and I don't care if it has some run through because it's just a blanket. So it's more frustrating when it's words. You know, you want a nice print for your words. I do have two of these transfers, but hopefully we can use the other side of this, go in the other direction without getting a mess from this, which we might get a mess, so. We'll see what it looks like. I try to pick up the extra without moving the transfer too much. See how it moves right then. You can hear it. All right. You guys are quiet. All right, that turned out pretty cool. We gotta let that dry, which means I need to lay this down. I'm going to lay it, get my backer sheet. There. Okay, let's try it. I'm going to turn it the other way. Make it go this way. So we have a plaid when we're done. cool down. It's kind of warm from the heat gun and put this paste away. Again, this was guava color. And then we're going to do the other direction in pink grapefruit. And this paste is really one of those thick ones. Which is not going to be easy to work with on the uh, not so sticky transfer. Okay, so if you're just joining, we have painted a canvas in this blend of greens and blues and I taped off this area 
and left that with the natural linen canvas underneath and we're applying the woven plaid transfer and first we did it in this direction in guava and now we're going to go in the other direction in another color and we're creating a blanket and then over the whole top we're going to put the big go jump in a lake which is the size of this in a dark color and I'm either going to do in a, the deep navy that I created with blue and black or brown. I might do all the words in the navy and then it has an or on it and I might do the or in um, the brown. It's at the bottom so the or would be down here. And I'm just trying to thin out this pink grapefruit. I want it, I don't want it too thick because I know that transfer is not going to be very sticky. And uh, it needs, the chalk paste needs to glide on it really well. So consistency is the key for that, the right consistency. It's still thick. like all your steps look really good so far and then you always worry that the next step is going to ruin the whole thing <laughs> so you want to make sure you take your time and prep everything just right and not rush it Kind of like pudding right now. A little bit more. A little bit more water. I keep saying that. A little bit more. And I know I'm going to be on here a while. I don't know how long I've been on, but oh, 34 minutes. So we should be able to get it done within an hour. All right, let's grab the transfer again. I'm gonna use the other corner. And we're gonna go this way. It's going to overlap some of that paste that's already up there. Now I'm just kind of getting this straight with this blue tape so even though that doesn't look right I want you know I make sure it looks square when I pull it off. Look at these and see if they look pretty square. Check that one more time. It's not really sticking, so I'm going to start in the middle and work my way out like this. Actually, this paste, I don't know if they changed the formula a little bit, but oops, I don't, don't want to go over into my watercolor. But it really is going on really smooth, so that's nice. Probably shouldn't have that up there in case I dribble off the edge of the jar.
I had been really clever, I would have gone over the edge of the canvas to have the blanket look like it's laying over it. But I kind of missed that boat, I think. Because that would have been pretty cool. Oh well. Okay. Got a lot on my fingers, so I'm going to get that off. And let's just double check this. Going through that chalked area, I'll make sure it's on there. Okay. Alright, let's take a look. Cool. Alright, I'm gonna lay that in on itself. And then I'll I'll take it to the bigger sink and wash that. So I'm gonna lay it on my backing sheet for now. And we could pick up these tapes. And there's our blanket. It does look like a blanket, doesn't it? No, I'm going to dry that really well. This gives it the feminine side, not being overly masculine. I don't think lake decorating decorating has to be just earthy tones. Put a little pop of color in it, right? canvas down right now. Awesome! I kind of feel like I want to put a border. A, this one has a nice clean border between the two, but this one um, is kind of sloppier. And you know how blankets have a fringe? Um, I could do fringe. I've done that before too. Like, well, the one I did recently was my buffalo uh, box I did. I did like the Navajo blanket in the background and then I did the white buffalo in front and I took a white chalk uh, pin and just made fringes on the end. But this I probably have to do with a brush or I can try to find a, maybe a border transfer that could possibly work. Let me take a look here. Oops, I'm spilling stuff. Um, let's see. Um, I wish we had a fringe border. That would be awesome. But even if I did, uh, what I was kind of thinking of doing this. border around here anyway, but maybe I'll just do it here, like, like it's the end of the blanket and this is the side of the blanket. And I guess it would be done in the coral, or what was it called, guava. Do it in the guava. See what it looks like. We're just getting fancy. That's all. Just getting fancy. Fancy, fancy. 
you know, you, if you have these transfers, you just as well use them. I wish you could see that up close. That looks really cool. <laughs> looks really cool. I might do it on that side too. I don't know. Maybe not because it looks more like the blanket edge. So cool. Let me show it to you. Can you see it? Mm, gotta get really close. See the little dots? Oh my gosh, what is this circle? Oh, do you see that? Oh, my jar made a ring. I'm going to have to go back and fix that. I didn't even see that. That is why you don't set your jar on your canvas, Robin. Right there. That's the reason. You have to blend it in. You all probably saw that. You can see that from the camera. Is it getting better? Good thing there's gonna be words over it. I don't think we'll notice it so much. Don't let that be a lesson. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, you can't really tell. All right pretty happy with this. Now I gotta decide if I want to do that fuzziness to it or not. I kind of like it just nice and crisp versus because this is blended and this is sharp and crisp so I might like I like the contrast of that so I might leave that. So it really finished up this edge putting that um, border on there and then this has a nice crisp edge so it looks like the side of the blanket and maybe this is more like the end of the blanket. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to dry this really well. I might put a little bit of wax on it first just to make sure it's all going to stay nice and safe before I put that tra new transfer on it. So let's dry. Put my lids back on. So fun watching it create. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to get this put away. So far, I'm pretty happy with it. Got some crazy colors going on, but that's all right. I think it's gonna look really cool after we put the um, go jump in the lake. So it'll be going right over the blanket, the word go. So I'm gonna dry it really well and apply a little bit of wax. Yes, so I don't pick up these colors on the back of my text transfer. water down here. Let me lay that in. Oh, I just got my finger stuck in it. <laughs> All right. Wax. Do you think I have enough paints out here? Oh my gosh. I only used a few. Okay, I'm going to use the special dark Min Wax Paste Finishing Wax. This is kind of meant to be used on furniture or wood to seal it in. And once the wax hardens, it becomes like a protect 
but definitely not waterproof like to put outdoors or even if you wouldn't want to, if it was a piece of furniture, I don't think you'd want to put a glass that's going to sweat and get the, it would leave, I think it would end up leaving a ring on your furniture. What am I looking for? I'm looking for my paint jar opener. Okay. So the dark, I could use the natural wax too, but I'm going to kind of want this to tone down a little bit, just darken down a little bit. And the wax will kind of collect in these grooves of the plaid and deepen that. Um, so it just gives it more depth and more character to that. So it'll look even more like a blanket, I think. So let's get some, I keep my rag in the jar to keep it soft. If you just kept your rag out, then it's going to um, get hard and stiff. This dark wax is always um, more dense and harder than the natural wax, so it's harder to get a bunch on your rag. And on a, sometimes on big wood signs, I'll just put a bunch of chunks of it out and then just start blending it in. But I don't think I really want to do that too much on the canvas. I got a big chunk of it right there, so I'm just kind of going in circles with it, get it worked in. And it's, like I said, it's starting to collect in the grooves of the blanket, which I like. After I do the uh, go jump in the lake, I will put more wax on top of that um, chalk area also. So, if this was softer wax, it wouldn't take as long. It's just so thick, it's hard to get on my rig. I should have brought my colors around the edges. Kind of bummed that I didn't do that. Especially the sides. So the main reason I'm doing this, two reasons, is really to seal in this chalk area up here so it doesn't pick up on my new transfer I'm gonna put on it. Plus it adds depth to my blanket and depth to this coloring here. So that's why I'm doing it. Okay, now we are ready to put on our go jump in the lake. And we'll see what that looks like. We took this canvas, which is one of those linen canvases that I got on super clearance at Michael's last year. And I taped off this area before I started and I watercolored 
wet paint in here, greens into blues. And then I made, this is representing a blanket, um, using the woven plaid and guava and pink grapefruit, is that what they call it? Yeah. And then I did a little bit of a border right here on the end of the, to look like the end of the blanket. It's the line with the tiny dots. And then I waxed over with the dark wax, just two reasons, to seal in this paste a little bit so it doesn't pick up on this transfer and to give depth to the overall canvas. Just darkens it a little bit, gives it a little bit more character. I think I might put a little bit of fuzz on that for my blanket or my towel. I don't wanna, I don't wanna push down on the canvas. Get it on there straight and centered. Something like this. Let's just measure the sides. Something's not square. I'm guessing it's the transfer. Oh, that's the canvas. Four, three, four. It's driving me crazy. I should just go up my eye. it's going to get. So I do think I'll do this all in the navy. And navy is a color I made. Mixing black in either Cadet or Liberty. It kind of always appears to be black when I photograph it or on the video, but it's really a dark navy.
making a good contrast against this light blue, even the coral blue and the green. And then when it comes down to the ore, I'll do that in the in brown. Okay. So say hello. Way cool. Thanks for explaining. You're welcome, Karen. All right. So we've got a nice consistency with our chalk paste here. We're ready to rock and roll. And let's get our brown. I'll go ahead and just use bark for the ore. I'm going to do the go and lift it up and then lay it back down and do the um, go jump in the lake. Uh, why don't I have any big squeegees here? I own like six of them and I only have two of them right here. Let me wash this one. Okay. Actually, this is called small squeegee, but and then there's the minis that I refer to as my big squeegee. Okay, we're going on with the navy. Jump. These letters have the little um, built-in texture to it, so it looks like it's already worn, already distressed, so that's cool. Instead of just being solid lettering like you would get if you were cutting vinyl, this is go going to go ahead and have the texture of being worn, uh, uh, worn off paint in it. So that's another advantage of working with our wonderful transfers that you get all this cool detail. Jump, that turned out good. Now in the lake. And the reason why we peel up so that the paste is not sticking in the transfer and drying in the transfer as we are working on other areas of the chalking. So if I didn't and it took me a while to get down here, that paste would already be drying in that silk screen and sticking in that silk screen and not sticking to our canvas. So that's why we like to paste and peel when we're looking working in a big area or on a big transfer. Paste and peel. Mm 
And I'm not putting a lot of pressure because I'm working on a soft surface, this canvas. And you could put books underneath to make it more firm, but I find this is just, just using a light touch will be just fine. There's lake. And now we gotta do our ore. And we'll do that in the bark color. Folded it on itself and laid in my water here. So it'll start to get wet. There. Woo! Now we need to dry this. Let me put all the paste away. Scrape, always scrape down your edges as best you can. And if you're not going to use this color in a while, you think, just squirt a little bit of water in it before you s seal it up. Like, just squirt a little. Best to use distilled water. However, I'm not going to lie, I'm using my tap water. I don't have too much problem, but some people's water may make your um, chalk paste mold. I haven't had much issue with that. Okay. All right. That is put away. Let's put, actually put them away. And get stuff off the desk. You can definitely use a blow dryer. This is a little heat gun. But you gotta make sure not to hold it one place too long because it's too hot. I mean, it's very hot. In fact, when I use a blow dryer, I just use cool air. But this is not so noisy as my hair dryer. So that's why I like to use it on the live because it's not so noisy. You just gotta not get too close. I'm gonna try. I wish I could find my other ones. I have two sets of these uh, decorative tacks. This says antique brass, but it might look cool. I'm thinking about pounding them into the frame, spacing them out. Might probably do like every 
five of them on this side. Probably four down here. And five. I think that'll look kind of... Kind of just frames it out more. I think it'll be kind of cool. Let's try a couple. I don't know how loud, how well the hammering will do on here. But uh, let's see what it looks like. But um, I'll, I'll maybe I'll do that after I get off. But I want to wax this a little bit more. And then I'll put the tacks in. And then I'll photograph it for you guys. But hopefully you can see it pretty well. It's kind of cool. You like the tack idea? Yeah, I think that'll just kind of frame it out a little bit more. And I think it'll look pretty cool. So... But, you know, that takes some loud hammering. So I can do that when we get off here. And then um, I'll photograph it and see what it looks like. Yeah, I think the colors are kind of cool. Let's see if you can see them okay here. I like the pop of color up here. It's like a beach towel or a blanket on your boat or in your lake house. So cool cool okay guys thanks for chalking with me today um hope i brought you some entertainment <laughs> if you got these transfers go give it a try i mean you can obviously do this on a chalkboard not necessarily the uh canvas coloring part but you can definitely put a blanket you know tape off an area and um do the blanket and then do all your lettering in white. So do your blanket in some bright color. And then do all your lettering in white. And you can still maybe do your ore. Or light color. Off white. Whatever. Um, you just won't have the coloring in the background. So yeah. I think it'll work. Pretty, pretty, pretty much how I envisioned it. So hey. I'll talk with you later. What is today? Wednesday? Tomorrow I'm again on Chalk Couture Design Studio, which is a private Facebook group for just Chalk Couture designers. So catch me on there. I'll be going on, on live with Amelia, three o'clock mountain, four o'clock central, five o'clock eastern, two o'clock pacific. I just want to say western <laughs> pacific time. So uh, catch me on there. I got some new, um, I'm just going to kind of go over some of the techniques I do and um, doing a couple projects so um, be sure to catch me on there and you can ask me all kinds of questions too so I'll talk with you later bye mm -hmm.